Hello and welcome to another episode of Coding Secrets. This time I'm doing part two of the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive game, The Adventures of Batman and Robin. In the first video got lots of views, which is great. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link here uh, in the description. And a quick note that all the footage I'm using is from the channel AL82 Retro Gaming Longplay. I'll leave a link to them in the description too. Right, let's get on with the next effect. Okay, this is another great effect. This is a full screen almost vector um, drawing of uh, the spotlight. You can see it's got um, a big scaling circle and diagonal lines. Great effect. Now I've done something similar in an old game called Pugsy where you can draw a vector graphic. You can see it up there in the top corner. Um, it's about a quarter of the size of what they've done. Um, you can see it morphing and changing shape. However, the way I did that was uh, every pixel is plotted correctly. What I mean by that in simple terms is the Sega Genesis stores two pixels in every byte. And the smallest bit of information you can quickly write with the hardware is one byte. So that means if you put a byte into memory, you'd get two pixels. So to draw the Pugsy effect, I had to mask the pixels. So cut the byte into two halves, which we called nibbles and individually mask them and plot them and it's all very messy. What they've done with the effect in this game is they've plotted two pixels at once. They've written one byte, which means if we pause it here, you can see there's a jagged edge. That's because the smallest unit they can plot is two pixels at once. So that obviously halves the time or doubles, at least doubles the speed of drawing it because you don't have to do any masking or anything like that. There's one other thing they could have done to double the speed of this, but I don't think they did it, and that's to stretch it vertically and then using a trick to keep the dither pattern looking right. It's something I did in the intro to Sonic 3D Blast, so let's have a quick look at that. So here's an image from the intro, and you can see there's vertical stripes on the screen, and what we can do is we can stretch that all the way down the screen, and then by using horizontal shifts, we can cause it to produce a dither pattern, the kind of checkerboard see-through pattern that you can see in the game. So they could have used exactly the same effect to use uh, interrupts to stretch the screen, and then use the horizontal shift registers to cause those vertical lines to become a dither pattern. Anyway, so that kind of explains how they've done this. In terms of drawing it, they used a little bit of math and then plotted everything as bytes uh, in an area of video RAM and then copied it to the screen. Okay, so this moving road is another really good 3D looking effect they've come up with, but like some others, it's remarkably simple to do. Let's just pause it here and take this frame. And then by using horizontal interrupts, we can stretch it in different ways. This gives the impression of the road moving up and down hills. And then by using horizontal scrolling, we can shift it left and right to make it look like it's twisting and turning. And then to get the checkerboard pattern scrolling through it, imagine every other line is red and white going all the way into the distance. And then by using horizontal interrupts, you can change the color palette so that red becomes white, and then a few lines further down make white red, and so on. And then you get this checkerboard effect running through. I'll leave links in the descriptions for very similar effects I did on both Sonic 3D Blast and Mickey Mania. Now this next effect took me a little while to figure out how they were doing it. It's a nice textured polygon effect. So it's unlike the earlier polygon effect, which was stippled. This actually has a texture running through it. The reason it's flashing like that is because sometimes they have three of these droids on screen. And so they render one per frame. So it's probably be updated every three frames or something like that. You can see here there's two. Now in terms of how they did the effect, well, it's pretty similar to the 3D road we just talked about. If we take a single frame here, we can have a look at what's going on. If we get rid of the bottom of it, we can see this is a version of the road where it's just been shifted with horizontal scrolling to make it move to the side, and then it can be stretched up and down to make it longer or smaller. And then the clever bit is they reflect that, so they fetch the lines backwards at the bottom to make this kind of triangular effect by shifting and stretching in a different way. Very simple effect but very, very effective and looks amazing. Had me stumped for a while, that one. Okay, this great 3D tunnel effect is actually a variation of the Toy Story floor effect that I talked about in the last Batman video I did. But very quickly, if we take the Toy Story floor effect here, and let's stretch it and flip it. And then what they've done is they've done the same effect on both layers. They've done the foreground and the background, which gives you this lovely kind of 3D tunnel effect. 
Now unsurprisingly they've used some of these effects multiple times in the game. This is the rotation effect we saw from the last video um, and the Pugsy uh, game I made. And you can see same thing here to do this cat boss. This great looking scrolling effect is a variation of the rotation we just saw combined with the overhead city scrolling section, again from the last video. And if you're wondering how they're doing the rotation of the enemy sprites, there will be pre-calculated animation frames stored in the cartridge and then decompressed to video RAM. This 3D table effect is almost an exact version of the Toy Story floor that we showed earlier. And this scrolling section is very similar to the opening scrolling section from the start of the game, again shown in the last video, which is in itself a variation of the Toy Story floor. And you can kind of see the 3D tunnel effect was used here too. All variations of the same effect. And that's it. I hope you enjoy this roundup of how all the effects were done in this game. Amazing game. Just to mention that one of the creators of the game contacted me and uh, really enjoyed the video. So hopefully he'll enjoy this part too. If you did, please thumbs up, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And I'll see you next time on Coding Secrets.